Hi guys, it's Nancy and one of you guys, subscribers, commented that you would like to see the rose stamped out from Kitchen Sink Stamps. This is called Multi-Step Hearts and Roses and I didn't have this set. So when I met uh, Maria at Simon Says Create, she um, sent it over to me and so we're going to stamp this out together. So this is one of her original sets, you guys. So I'm very honored to get this and be able to stamp it out for you guys. So whenever you get kitchen sink stamps, you get a couple of things. First of all, these are high quality photopolymer stamps made here in the United States. Um, it comes with this clear storage bag. When you open it up, you get your packaging, which gives you some basic instructions here, some ideas. Uh, make sure you log online because at Kitchen Sink Stamps, they have color recipes that tell you different ink colors to use, different manufacturers. And of course, you can follow them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and Twitter. And yep, look, there's the date, 2008, made in the USA. Now, you're also going to get a basic instruction guide which will tell you how everything should line up. And this comes with every stamp set. If you buy a stamp set, maybe you buy it secondhand or you reorganize and you lose this, this is free to download and print off of their website as well. So again, it's kitchen sink stamps, um, dot com. But this will show you how to stamp out the different elements. And then the way they come packaged is you have this color guide, which you can use as a layering guide, and then you have the photopolymer stamps. Now, normally what I do is I transfer my stamps to the back of this layering guide so I know which stamps go where. That just helps me with organization. Just make sure you stick it to the back, not to the front. You want to stick it to the back. Um, but as you can see here, this is a nice set with a larger rose, a smaller rose, a, a rose bud, that hasn't bloomed yet. Um, and then some leaves. There's a three-step leaf, a single leaf, and a stem. And then some wonderful sentiments. They say, stamped with love, happy anniversary, te amo, I love you, um, my dear, for you, you're in my thoughts, cara mia, you're in my heart, sympathy, with sympathy. So we're going to stamp out, see what we can do here. And I'm going to be using some Catherine Puller inks and going to reveal to you guys, haha, <laughs> if you didn't catch it on the last video, I did show this in my last video with the Dogwoods, but nobody said anything. So um, Cotton Candy is the brand new light pink. We're going to bring that in with It's a Girl, Be Mine, and some Pucker Up. So these are be our ink colors from Catherine Puller. These are dye inks. I love her inks. <laughs> and for the greens, I have Lime Ricky, Grass Skirt, and Martini. So use any inks that you have. You can mix and match your inks. Remember, inks don't have eyeballs, so they're not going to be offended if you bring in some other colors. And I'm using my mini Misty here. This will just help keep everything lined up. And the first thing I want to start with, I believe, is let's start with this kind of um, closed rose, rose stem. And it looks like we have just a single stem. One, two, three, four for our layers and there's a number on there see one two three four for our layers okay so let's start with our stem i'm gonna pull this back piece off and here is our stem and we'll see if we can get a rosebud a single rows on here. I believe this is five and a half by four and a quarter cardstock. All right, I'm going to use the darker green since this is only single stem. The newer ones, you have multiple layers, but I'm glad this is a very thin stem. So I'm glad this is only a single layer. I don't have to worry about messing it up. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that, I have a little bit of Hero Arts cleaner here, and I just spray that on and use a rag to wipe that down. I like microfiber towels because uh, they don't leave any lint like baby wipes do. OK, 
Okay, and then what I do when I use the stamp is I put it back on my layering guide. But let me show you what the layering guide is used for. So now we're going to go in with stamp number one of this rosebud. See how we can line that right over and we can see where to put that. Once we stamp number one, then we can use number two and line it up. Number three, line it up. There's a little arrow at the bottom here, which tells you exactly where you should be lining it up. So you can use that arrow to give you guidance, and I would put that right over the stem to give me guidance on where I'm going to line that up. So let's grab that rosebud, which is number one, right here. Close my door, lift that up. Now, whenever you have a brand new stamp set, sometimes um, during manufacturing, they don't, the new stamps don't accept the ink very well. You can take Versamark, which is a clear, sticky ink, and stamp it with that first or ink it up with that first. And then you can just wipe that down or you leave it on there. But that'll help, number one, prevent staining or help reduce staining. Nothing will prevent staining, especially when I'm using these pinks and red inks. But number two, it'll help the ink get absorbed into that stamp better. Now these are spongy ink pads, so a very light, light tap is all that it takes. And because I'm using a misty tool, if it doesn't stamp out exactly the way I want it, which is perfect that time, I can always re-ink it and stamp it again. So that's number one. Clean that. And then, again, one of the things that you can do is take the stamp layering guide and see I can line up layer number two and see how layer number two is supposed to go. See that? And then I'm going to take my stamp number one and put that right on the back. This is just easy storage for me. And my stem. Oh, you know what? Guess who stamped that upside down? Me. This is supposed to be the base of... <laughs> this is when we flip the paper over, you guys. Flip it over. Start again. Always tuck your paper down into the corner. Whoopsie. Okay. This little part here, that's the base of your rose. That's the top. Let's try that again. Rookie mistake. All right, and we're gonna ink that up in martini again. Hey, I thought it was the roots or something. Okay, all right. Whoopsie. This is why you watch my videos so you learn not to make the same mistake. That curved part goes at the top. All right, and we're gonna grab number one again. Okay. And see, it shows you that curved part, how that goes on there. So what I can do is put my stamp down and see how that goes. There we go. Much, much better, Nance. Good job. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to, again, put this on the back, not the front, so that it lines up perfectly with its little spot. Okay, so then number two with this rosebud is over here. Not over here, it's over here. So I'm going to grab this one. Okay, and you can look through and see how that lines up. But again, if you need help, don't be afraid to grab this color guide, line it up, look through there, and see how this is supposed to line up. Another thing you want to do is keep this right in front of you. Sometimes you have to stand up. If my head hits the camera, I'm sorry. 
sometimes you got to stand up to make sure you're seeing through the stamp correctly. Okay, so again, I'm going to use a little bit of Versamark because this is a newer stamp set for me. And we're going to go in with our second pink, which it is It's a Girl. And you always want to make sure your paper is in that bottom right corner before you stamp and before you line up your stamp. If it moves out of the way, your magnets aren't strong enough, you're going to need to realign it back into that corner. And yes, having some kind of stamp positioner makes it a lot easier. It's not necessary, but it does make it a lot easier when you are doing multiple layer stamping like this. Okay, we're going to put this back in spot number two. All right, spot number three is the one that's next to it. And again, we're going to look through. And basically, I'm lining up the bottom, and I'm lining up this kind of free edge over here. It kind of hangs over. That's what I'm looking through when I look through here. My third pink is going to be Be Mine. And again, mix and match your inks. If you have different ink companies, you may not have four different colors of, from the same company. Swatch them out on a piece of paper, see what they look like, and mix and match them. I promise you their feelings will not get hurt if you play with different inks on a, on a project. No one's going to know. Okay, so that was number three. And then we have one more, layer four, which is all the way up top here next to the hearts. Now, whenever you don't know which side goes down, it's always the side that has the less amount of photopolymer. So this is very solid photopolymer on this side. This is the side that sticks to the door. The bottom side here where it has less photopolymer, that's the side that has the design etched into it. So that's the side that goes face down. I know on the first layer is usually when people get confused because that first layer has the most solid layer. Okay, I think we're okay there. So what I'll do is close my door, pick that up. See, I can see through how this is lined up now. Okay, I think that's correct. And we're gonna use Pucker Up for our last color pink here. It's my favorite color, pink. If you don't have four colors of ink, it's okay to double stamp that last color. I think I'm off a tight. No, that actually doesn't look too bad. Looks okay. All right, so there is our pink rosebud on our rose stem. Now we need to add some leaves. Leaves are usually a little easier. And we have a cluster of three, and there are three layers and a single and a single leaf. So a single most solid leaf we'll put on one side. And then the cluster we can put on the other side. Actually, I'm going to save the cluster because there's no stem on there. So we'll save that for the other rows. We'll just do the single one. Okay, so number one on the leaf. Same thing, a little bit of Versamark just to help that ink stick. And we're going to start with our lightest green, which is Lime Ricky. Now, 
Now see, that looks a little light to me, so I'm gonna go back in and ink that again. All right, that looks much better. I'm gonna clean my stamp before I move on to the next one. And a very light, light tap with the ink. You don't need a lot of ink. You don't have to press it down. And you only use the Versamark the first time. Okay, still a little light. I think I need to re-ink this ink pad. All right, that looks great. Now we're gonna move on to leaf number two. Same thing, we're gonna line it up over top. Make sure your stem is lined up as well as the leaf. And our second color is going to be grass skirt. which is much juicier of an ink pad. Maybe a little too juicy. Wow! These colors do dry back, by the way, so don't worry. And then there's only one more layer for the leaf. And I'm lining up the top half of the leaf. Looking through the leaf, I can see where that center vein should go. So I'm kind of lining, I mean, looking through the stamp. And with that one, we're going to use Martini. And that one's a little hard to see, so I'm gonna double stamp that one. I might grab a darker ink, actually. Let's try eucalyptus. Much better. Look how realistic that leaf looks now. Now when I flip the leaf to this side, I am lining up the bottom half of the leaf over here. And again, try to line up the stem and the center vein if you can. Look at that. Doesn't that look so real? Now, I wonder if I can line up my stem to make it a little darker. Do I risk it? Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna use the eucalyptus so we have a little bit darker stem here. All right, I think that looks much better, okay. So that is the single rose stem with the rosebud. I think that came out beautifully. And is there a happy birthday on here? Let me see here. There is not. I will grab a sentiment from another set. My mom's birthday's this weekend, so I thought that would be perfect for her. All right, let's 
use the larger rows and see what we can get out of that one. How pretty that came out. Okay, I'm gonna stay with the same inks. I'm just going to change my orientation this way. And again, going to tuck my paper, everything in this bottom right hand corner before I put my magnet on so that everything is held in place there. And we're gonna start with the larger rosebud, which is number one. And I'm just gonna put it in the corner here and I can always put the leaves behind it well, we're just going to start with one, almost like a note card style. Okay, and we're going to use the same colors. So I'm going to start with my Versamark first. This is a pretty solid stamp. And grab our pinks. So we're going to start with cotton candy. By the way, if there are any other kitchen sink stamps that you would like to see layered out, I have a ton of videos. Check my kitchen sink stamps playlist. Um, but if there isn't one you see, you can email me. My contact information is down in the description. I also have a small discount to kitchen sink stamps. That is also in the description. Now, it looks like I missed a little bit of ink there. On the first layer, it really doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that that's not supposed to be that way. So let me ink it up again. See, a little spot right there. So I'll just put some more ink on there and stamp it again. And there it's filled it in. Okay, no problem. Sometimes there's a little extra residue from manufacturing. and You just need to clean it up. That's exactly what it is. It rubbed right off. Just clean it again. Okay, great. All right, so number two stamp. Is this one here, next one down. And I can look through the first two are usually the easiest as long as you can see through the stamp. And I can see that there's a little notch there and a notch here. And I want to line those up. If you have a problem layering stamps, like for example, what if we were doing this in like a yellow and that first layer was a super light yellow? You don't have to start with layer one. You can go on to layer two, which is this layer here, and then go back and add layer one. So this is It's a Girl. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. We're going to keep moving along here. Layer three. All right. Now you'll notice as I look through the stamp, I can see lighter spots. And this is going to want to stamp over the darker spot. So you want to make sure that the solid layer that you're looking through is stamping over a darker spot. And the cutouts, so you're going to see a cutout here where there's light, cutout here, here, here. Those cutouts are still going to be cut out. We don't want to stamp any darker inks on those. So we're going to line up straight through and see those little lines. Those are the cutouts. We want to make sure those are staying light. We don't want to have those covered by the stamp or we're going to end up losing that light area, which is what gives this that 3D effect. Layer three is Be Mine. Be my, be my baby. Okay. See that? See, we still have those light areas coming through. And that's what makes these unique is the dark areas is what you're adding. You're adding the shadow. And the more you add, the more depth comes out of this artwork. And Maria designs all these stamps. She's from California. Again, high quality photopolymer stamps. You are not going to find these on your 
knock off generic websites. These are high quality. Now, another thing she does is she offers free SVG files. So she doesn't do dice, but she offers free SVG files. So if you have a Cricut machine, a Silhouette, a Brother Scan and Cut, any of those electronic die cutting machines, you can cut out the dies and stamp on them with the free SVG at the time of purchase. Okay, so same thing I did the last one. I'm looking through the stamp and I wanna make sure all of those lines that I see are in the light area and the solid areas are on the dark. That's gonna give me my shadow layer. I'm always stamping my next shadow layer. So this one is pucker up. And this should give us a wowy factor when this one's done. It already looks amazing. Whoa, doesn't that look real? Oh my gosh, I can never draw or paint anything like that. So to be able to stamp it, love it. And I don't have to do anything else with this. It looks so pretty. You can make a set of note cards, little thank you cards just with that. We're gonna add our leaves to this. So we're going to do, let's do the three because these are designed so that we don't have to do any masking. I'm gonna layer this right up against this side here. Let's do this. So that's layer one of the three. You know, can I do this single? Let's see, can we squeeze this guy in? Let's squeeze him in here. We'll do them at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna do both of them in Lime Ricky. Actually, no. We're gonna do them in Martini because that was a lighter green. Changing it up a little bit. Martini first. Oh, that looks good. And I can always mask this off and add some more flowers. I'm just doing something real simple here. Okay, and this is layer two for this guy. And this is layer two for this guy. Okay, we're gonna go in with grass skirt for number two. Very juicy, juicy ink pad. Look at that dimension that comes out, wow. This is the final layer to the leaves, layer three. Okay, and for that one, we're gonna use eucalyptus. Look at that, fantastic, so beautiful. And I think I will dig out a birthday sentiment and stamp happy birthday on there for mom. There are some little hearts on here. Let's do the little three layer of hearts. here in the corner. So again, you're gonna start with the first layer and I would stamp happy birthday up there. And I think what I'll do is put this heart kind of like 
here. I'm going to start with the lightest again, which is the new cotton candy. And that looks good by itself, but when you layer it, it really pops. Okay, number two is It's a Girl. going to be be mine you have that kind of puffy heart I'll probably cascade a couple of those but I want to get my sentiment on here I know I have other sets that say happy birthday I'll put happy birthday mom on there and then I'll have that. So these are the roses from the hearts and roses stamp set, multi-step stamp set from Kitchen Sink Stamps. And again, you have some, you have one more flower on there I didn't do, but I think you guys get the idea. Wonderful sentiments as well. Check it out. Description We'll have the link and a discount code for you. If you have any questions, post them down below. Please consider subscribing to my channel and check out my playlist with the other kitchen sink stamps if there's any others that you're looking at stamping out. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye, guys.